Hi, it's Ranger Mara. Welcome to our final episode of our watercolor wildflower workshop with Betty Gatewood. And I want to give a really big thank you to Betty for helping us to share her skills so that we can spend more time with nature and learn to draw and, and, and paint and have a good time with wildflowers. So thank you very much, Betty. We really appreciate your help with this. So now in our fourth uh, episode, Betty's going to help you to uh, finish your final illustration. All right, so we're going to sketch this. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, it's always best to um, work on a white surface so that you can see the plant better. So I'm going to move this over here, and we're going to do this, okay? All right, so we've got this plant, and so you might want to even say, I'm going to start here. Remember, this is your sketch, so it's not what you're going to paint on. And we're going to go down to about here or so just to kind of give you perspective. If you use your pencil, if you don't have a ruler, you just say, okay, there's one, two, three, maybe four heights. The petals and the flower being one of them. So let's just say there's one, two, three, and four. So the first part is gonna be where the flower is. And then the stem comes down this way and some of the leaves come up around this way. So we're going to, um, first of all, figure out where is the center of the flower. It's not in the middle of the view that you have. It's off to the side. So I'm going to put it right around in here. And then the petals, if you can try to be a little graceful and use a real light touch. You don't want to bear down on this because if you make a mistake, or if you want to change something, it's going to be harder to erase. So we've got something like that. Well, I don't like that because this is too long. So we're going to come back and do that. OK, the stem doesn't come right down. It has some grace to it. So it actually starts here. And then it comes around and down. Then this plant has what's called basal leaves. That means it's at the base. So we're going to have that the base is right about in here, if that's the case, one, two, three. So one, two, three. So here's going to be the beginning of the stem. And then the, flat, the, um, the leaves are going to be here and down this way. And you notice, too, that these leaves, the center of the leaf is lighter color than the rest of the leaf. But we'll deal with that in a little bit. But So we're going to fill it in. And if you'll notice from that other photograph, that often this is in a whole field of so many flowers. And that the, sometimes you can't even see the, the basal leaves, and they'll be covered up with the flower at that time of the year. OK, so I've got that. And I'm just sketching. I'm not really worried so much about all the details. So, but I kind of like that. It's OK. And I want to leave a little bit of a suggestion about the mid vein of these leaves down here. OK, so that is, um, and I'll come back probably and adjust the very tips. I have a tendency to make some of the tips a little bit less um, rounded. So we'll do that. All right, so we got that. Now what do we do? So I went back and I redid the petals and kind of did a little thing here. And you wonder, what's all this scribbling about? That's the next step, and I'd already started on that. You know, you take a, a soft leaded pencil, and now, even though we did all the work on this, we need to get it onto better paper. 
So this is paper that's stiffer. It's almost like poster board, but it doesn't have a shine to it. And um, so I want to put this on here, and here's how you do it. So you got this image, and you can see that the flower is kind of arched to the right. That's how you want it. But then you come over here, and the first time I heard about doing this, I was so scared because I saw them scribbling all over the paper that they had just sketched on until I realized, nope, you're doing it on the back. So now you have this and you want to transfer it onto good paper. So that's when you put it on here and you center it. Sometimes I'll tape it down with this. I don't think I need to. But then, guess what? You get to sketch it again. You want to put it in the center, if you want it in the center. All right, so I'm looking at the petals, and I have four petals. So it's not a monocot, is it? It's a dicot, which means it has different uh, number of, of uh, stamens and um, chambers in the, in the pistil for the ovary. Um, so I'm going to just go right back over it. And the other thing to remember about doing this is that you don't want to make it perfect because sometimes flowers are not perfect. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you noticed that, but there's this little section right here. It looks like an insect enabled to um, chew on a little bit of that. So I got that, and the, I don't, and what I, oops, I forgot to do, so I'm gonna take a little bit there. And it looks like a little oval right here in the center, and then the pistol comes up like that. So then the stem has to be right in line with the center of the flower. So we're going to do this. And sometimes, you know, you, you may not have to uh, be exact on that, but you want to be pretty close. All right, so this, these uh, leaves are actually behind the stem. I drew that one in, a new one. All right. And so we've got the leaves, and they're kind of overlapping here in the front. And then you got the ones behind. And the number, well, if you wanted to be really specific about it, you could count the ones from each stem. Okay, so now what do you do? Well, you kind of hold on to it and see if what you are looking at is kind of what you want. So at this point, you've got this to work on. And you might uh, want to come back and just do a little bit of light touch-up or light erasing like that's not quite right. So you're going to go do that. And I'm going to put in a little bit of the main vein of the petal, just so that I can remember. Because if you remember, the main veins on the flower are white with blue around them. That's tough to paint, but we're going to give it a try. The other thing I want to make sure that you notice, too, is that this color right here is not the same color as this color. So the color variation is something that you'll need to, um, to acknowledge and try to represent on your flower. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and um, do a little bit of paint on this. And often, what happens is that once I start painting, I realize um, I want to do a different color right close to it, and I can't because it's still wet. So at this point, you're going to need a paper towel, and you've got water, you've got paint. I'm going to take probably a medium-sized paintbrush with keeping my my flower uh, so I can see it. And 
then I need my paint. So I'll just use these. And you want to keep your water close to your paints. And you want to be able to have a paper towel in case you think that you get too much water. So I'm going to use this. And don't, don't leave your paintbrush in water like that. That doesn't do the brush tip any good. So you want brushes that have a nice tip and a point. So let's just see how I primed these earlier. Um, and so we're going to um, use uh, a little bit of paint and a little bit of water to make this. And so I'm going to just make sure that I don't get it too dark right now. Okay. I'm going to do that. And I'm leaving the center of the flower without blue. Now, not every petal has to have every little white line, but I've got the essence of that. Okay, so I did that, but I really should have started with the center. But I'm going to go back and do it now, because what would happen if I, if I put the yellow right next to the blue, you'd have green. And uh, this flower's not green. So you want to keep those separate. So I'm going to go back in here and do the kind of the golden center and then leave it so that the pistol, which is white, can go up like that. And then let's just go ahead and do a couple more here. So the touch is very light, and I can come back and do it darker, but you can't make it too much lighter. There are ways to make mistakes and change your mistakes, but okay, so you can see that the first petal was much darker. So what you can do is you can add a little bit more water to it. And you don't erase it, but you take your paper towel and you can blot it. And sometimes that will change it back to a little bit of a lighter color for you. OK, let's do the last one. And then we'll go on to a little something else. Now, you'll notice that it's not exactly like what the picture is. That's OK. That's OK, because as I like to say, now whose picture is this? It's your picture. And you can do it however you want to. You can make it uh, darker out here if you want. But the thing is to, of course, is to try to be botanically correct. All right, so let's go down here. And we'll finish up with a couple of leaves on the bluet. I will tell you that I'm not a real fan of the green that's in the trays that you buy, so I will make my own green. And you always start with the yellow, and then you go with the blue, and sometimes you get what you want. Remember to, I'm going to do a, a couple of leaves down here, and I'm going to try to remember that they also have a mid vein that is lighter in color. Okay, and so do that for a couple of them here. And then after this dries, I will come back and add layer after layer just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, uh, there's your stem. And with this one, you'd need a really tiny brush to get that, to get the depth in green so that you have the shadow. And sometimes it's hard to do. OK, last thing I want to show you has to do with how to finish it off. So we're going to take the pen. And even though I probably would do this after I've all finished, and this is a very, very fine pen. So we're going to go up. And that little insect chewing part that I talked about. And we're going to go there. And we're going to go here. To me, this 
just defines it a little bit more. After it's all dry, then you can come back with your eraser and take the pencil marks off. And then you're at liberty to play around a little bit more. Sometimes this gives me more a perspective of where I want to put darker blues or lighter. And then also for this, um, excuse me, for the, uh, the center, and it actually was kind of like a little half moon, but it has little parts that stick out, and then up comes the pistol. So to me, you can actually do a little bit more detail with that. And I can do a different color down here on the ground. But then I would take and put the water around, and not touching the plant, because that would cause the blue to come out. And I want it to look like it's sort of a mostly sunny day. And you can go as far and as much water as you want. And then, oops. are you ready? Here we go. And you can kind of just kind of move it around and just kind of have fun with the paint that is not quite as detailed as the itty bitty little stuff that we did down there. And then you can kind of spread it around. And it's, it's kind of like, oh, I get to do this now after doing all of those small things. And kind of think about what the sky might look like on a, on a bluet day. And then maybe even blending up a little bit, kind of highlighting it. I kind of like that. And on and on. Now, down here at the bottom, just briefly, we could do that too. It was on a gravel <laughs> road. And mm, kind of gravelly. Um, um, so we'll just just growing right up out of the gravel on this fire road in the south district of Shenandoah. It just said, look at me. I'm here. I found some sunshine, and I want an insect to come and visit me. And so you can, you know, you can make it as blobbity blob as you want. And you can bring the sky down as far as you want, whatever. Uh, it's, it's your painting, so um, you can leave it as white on, or the, the flower on the white, or you can do background. You can use watercolor pencils. You can use um, colored pencils. You can use acrylics. You can use watercolors. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Thank you.